So aside from legislative requirements in many jurisdictions requiring companies and organizations to have health and safety committees, of course, depending on their size and their function, it needs to be pointed out that health and safety committees are vital to any organization's health and safety processes, their program, and their culture. Now, health and safety committees, sometimes called joint occupational health and safety committees, are essential to the growth and success of a health and safety program. They're basically, if you look at it, the pulse of the health and safety culture within an organization. Now, in this video, what I'm gonna do is I wanna talk about or point out five reasons why a health and safety committee is vital to your program, why you need to have one, and if you're the employer, why you need to fund and resource one and promote it within your organization. So let's start by talking about point number one. Now, as I just mentioned, this is reason or point number one, health and safety committees are basically the safety pulse or the vital signs for the health and safety within the organization. Because they represent different stakeholder groups within the organization, and they're made up of management and the labor force, what happens is, is you basically have a good indicator of how health and safety is doing within your organization. You have a good indicator of the acceptance and buy-in of the health and safety program or different parts because these people within your health and safety committee are bringing back feedback from their different stakeholder groups that they represent. So it's a good idea to have one because you have a good diagnostic of how health and safety is doing within your organization. Now realize one thing, the best thing that ever grows health and safety in any organization is a healthy health and safety culture. And basically what a health and safety committee is, is they're kind of like steroids for a health and safety culture. Because of that cross-sectional representation, they create an atmosphere and an environment where there's interworking within different stakeholder groups. Essentially, another thing that you can consider is not only do health and safety committees build a health and safety culture, but they also build an employment culture. They're very good at breaking down silos or bringing silos together so that different work groups can work together. Basically, joint occupational health and safety committees are essential for fostering, growing, and maintaining a healthy health and safety culture. Part of this is what they're doing is constantly relaying health and safety policy and program expectations to stakeholder groups, which brings me to point three. If you're not having your health and safety committee being involved, directly involved within the program development and becoming stewards of your health and safety program, don't worry, I'll leave a definition on what I mean by stewards and stewardship down below. You're doing yourself a disservice. Essentially, if you make the health and safety committees stewards of your health and safety program, then they're directly involved with the program. They're directly involved with the consultation, the collaboration, the inception, rollout, and implementation of the program in different parts. In fact, being directly involved with the program really promotes that continuous improvement that employers and organizations are looking for. Now on the note of continuous improvement, that brings me to point number four, safety committees become safety program promoters. They become safety influencers, if you will, within your organization. Effective safety committees promote a health and safety policy. They enhance safety communication amongst the different stakeholder groups. And as a result, the organization benefits from it. If you have an effective health and safety committee, what in turn you end up with is constant promotion or continuous promotion of your health and safety program and the program components among the different stakeholder groups at different organizational levels. The old notion of authorship leading to ownership, which leads to commitment, never ever fails. And so basically what you end up with if you have an effective health and safety committee is essentially health, safety, and environment program champions. Final reason here, not necessarily the most or least important, none of these are, are in a priority. Effective health and safety committees help to fill health and safety personnel gaps. Now, I'm not meaning that they're a replacement for a health and safety professional. If you have a organization that can afford it, I all, by all means, promote the idea of having a health and safety professional on staff. But if for whatever reason you can't afford to have a health and safety professional on staff, health and safety committees will help to solve, sort of fill those gaps. A lot of times smaller organizations will be able to rely on consultants or people that are hired periodically to help with the health and safety program. Effective health and safety committees help to fill the gaps 
where you don't have enough health and safety personnel or if you only periodically have consultants coming in to fill those positions. Now, health and safety committees can help fill that professional gap in smaller organizations where you don't have a full-time safety professional. Or if you have one or two or a small team of health and safety professionals but a large organization, they can help to fill a lot of those gaps. Because the members of the Health and Safety Committee come from that cross-section, they become the eyes and ears for the safety function during normal operations, and they can help to point out places and problems within your health and safety program. In fact, you can even be offloading some of the work with, for the health and safety professionals on the committee members, such as like program document review. Incidentally, many jurisdictions require by legislation that there be participation by health and safety committee members or health and safety uh, representatives on such things as inspections and incident investigations. So they become a vital part just by helping to fill those safety professional gaps. So just to put it all together, Health and safety committees are a vital part of the organization. They provide a pulse or vital signs, if you will, to the safety culture within the organization. They help to promote effective safety culture and even a good workplace culture by breaking down silos. They're a vital part of your health and safety program development, the implementation and continuous improvement because of the communication that they have. Which leads me to that fourth point, of course, that they're good safety program promoters and safety influencers. And finally, they can help to fill those safety personnel gaps. So honestly, if you're an employer that is hesitant or are wanting to understand if they need to fund and resource a health and safety program, the answer is yes. I'm hoping this video provided some of that um, confirmation. Hey, if you want to know more about health and safety committees, there will be a video up in this corner talking about the composition of a health and safety committee. If it's not there right away, don't worry about it. YouTube has just put one there as a placeholder until I get it done. Or there's a playlist up in this corner outlining video toolbox talks, which are just short three to four minute talks on different health and safety subjects and they're a good resource to use within your organization because they promote your health and safety program and corrective actions within your organization. Now please do me a favor, until we see each other again, don't just think about safety, don't just talk about safety, but be a safety influencer, provoke safety, do safety wherever you end up. Take care, bye for now.